Welcome back to Financial Therapy. It's not just about the money. I'm personal financial planner, columnist, and financial therapist, Rick Kaler. Research tells us that 90% of all financial decisions are made emotionally, not logically. For nearly four decades, I've been helping people make better money decisions. So what makes my financial worldview different from most financial experts? I blend the nuts and bolts of financial advice with the emotions that drive making them. Good money decisions are not just about the money. So let's get started with today's episode. Hi, Mark Kaler. Thanks for joining me for another edition. I just uh, returned from the annual Financial Therapy Association uh, conference. And uh, this is my, how many years have we been doing this? Maybe this was the 13th, 13th or 14th. Um, conference. I've been to all of them. And uh, it's been quite a ride um, watching this organization that a lot of people said would never make it, um, wasn't needed, um, that we'd be sued over using the word therapy in our name. Um, grow from it was formed in 2009 and today has, I think, 375 members. I've never mentioned the organization much or, or spent any time on, uh, focusing on it, which is surprising with the podcast. In uh, episode 29, I talked about the Nazrudin Project, so I'm not going to say a lot more about that, except that the 30th anniversary of the Nazruddin Project will be in the Black Hills of South Dakota on September 5th through the 7th. It's fascinating. Go listen to that episode to learn more about it. It is the best conference that I attend every year. And um, the FTA conference being number two. And I have pretty high standards. <laughs> but, and in many ways, uh, the uh, Financial Therapy Association had some of its roots in the Nazrudin uh, project. So it's uh, extremely unique. And if you are an FTA member and if you've been to the FTA conference, I'll just about guarantee you that you're going to also find a tribe uh, in Nazrudin. But I digress. This particular conference was well done. It was in Charlotte, uh, North Carolina. And I had so many uh, just quality discussions. I, I can't really think of a conference where I had more um, great discussions with, with people. So often going to a conference is like getting hit with a fire hose. <laughs> You know, it's oh, once you've been there for a while, it's like all your best friends, you know, all 100, <laughs> all at once. So oftentimes there's not a lot of uh, quality conversations that happen um, because it's just so hard. It's so hard to get around and so hard to be intentional. But um, I, I enjoyed many conversations uh, <clears throat> Natasha Knox is the chair of next year's FTA conference, which will be in San Diego from March 16th, sorry, May, May 16th to the 18th. And that is coming up very quickly. They're going back to uh, putting the conference in the spring rather than the fall which is probably a pretty good idea because the fall is so uh, cluttered with uh, conferences. So I think ultimately that will be a, a good move. Um, and we talked about a number of things. We talked about uh, the format of the conference and perhaps adding some 90 minute slots, some three hour slots or some all day tracks 
similar to what the American Group Psychotherapist Association does. You can uh, attend their conference and select from like an, an all-day offering, two one-half-day offerings, or um, four 90-minute offerings. And we talked about um, other things. Um, Natasha recently got into a, a, a level one IFS training, which uh, she's very fortunate to have gotten into. Um, my associate, Ilana Vinesmith, who is also there, was there and did a wonderful presentation on nonviolent communication, uh, has put in 22 times, and I'll bet there's a few more now added to that, into the lottery uh, to try and get the level one training in IFS, and obviously hasn't. So as I think I've mentioned before, not being able to be trained in IFS is a huge block that is impeding um, combining IFS with uh, financial therapy. But I also digress. Had a wonderful uh, lunch with Carol Anderson. Carol Anderson was one of the original uh, 30 people that got together in Anaheim, California in 2008. And uh, where we decided, yeah, we, th we think financial therapy has some traction. We think it's a thing. Let's go forward. And she uh, founded Money Quotient, is a renowned researcher in the financial planning world. And we talked about doing some research on the Enneagram. I think I might have a podcast where I talked about the Enneagram. If, if you have never heard of the Enneagram, I think it's the best um, personal financial, not financial, personal development tool that's out there. It's way more than a personality typing um, mechanism. So you can go to the EnneagramInstitute.com, I believe. You can take a couple online tests and, and read about it. It's um, quite an amazing tool. Works really well with IFS. And I'm really curious how the nine types um, and the three basic instincts do money. Is there a difference in how a type one does money versus a type seven? Uh, I don't know. And it's research I've wanted to do for, I don't know, 10 years or more. Um, and just have not been able to secure a mailing list or um, an organization that has the skills to do research like that. I mean, typically you're talking about a university. So she gave me some thoughts how to um, uh, shorten up, shortcut, and make that, uh, make that a little more simple by doing some exploratory research. So that was, that was really great, um, having that discussion with Carol. Sandra Davis was there, who's um, the dean of the Golden Gate University program. And uh, she just recently completed an IFS level one training and had uh, a lot of things to say, many that I had never heard <laughs> that when I first told her about IFS that she dismissed it, like, you know, what, what crazy thing is Rick on to? Um, and she read the paper that appeared in the Journal of Financial Planning uh, that I co-authored with Michelle Glass on, uh, we called it the new kid on the block, IFS informed financial therapy. And that uh, changed her mind. So I was glad about that. She, uh, she did a really nice presentation, brought in, uh, there, there's the eight C's of self energy in IFS, which are Calm, curiosity, compassion, connectedness, confidence, courage, clarity, and creativity. 
and she talked about the the five P's, which are talked about. They're not as widely known. The five P's of self, which are patience, presence, persistence, perspective, and playfulness. And I got the idea, hmm, I, I need to, uh, I, I'm talking about her, her, one of the things um, that uh, I'm promoting in the IFS world is self-led finances, self-led money decisions. And so I had the idea of applying the, the five P's to finance. So that was um, kind of cool. Um, I met Jillian Knight. Um, I never met Jillian before. And we had a great conversation uh, talking about our history with um, uh, very popular um, money personality. And it was so intriguing to me that I've decided to let's do a podcast. So Jillian is going to appear on a future podcasts um, around. It's going to be more on the topic of um, uh, cult personalities and how dangerous they can be. And of course, it's not just in finance. Megan Ford, former South Dakotan, was there. Megan has uh, is one of the who's who in uh, uh, financial therapy. She's at the University of Georgia, which the University of Georgia cleaned up on the awards this year. <laughs> it's a pretty prolific group uh, involved in financial therapy. And she runs the Aspire Clinic there, which brings financial planning students and marriage and family therapy students together to do financial therapy uh, with other students. And she wrote, she got the best paper award and unveiled her couple's financial conflict scale, which I have been waiting for for several years. Um, so I'm, I'm to receive it soon and I'm really excited about it because it's one of the very few evaluations that can be used to evaluate the level of tension and conflict that couples may have around money. And I'm looking forward to incorporating it into my uh, evaluation flow both with financial planning clients and um, financial therapy clients. Talking about the University of Georgia, uh, Christy Archuleta was there. Um, she uh, was also recognized as the outstanding educator. Um, and the University of Georgia has just completed or will start, I think, in January of 2024, their first 15 hour uh, course on financial life planning where a person can get a graduate certificate. And that, um, so that'll be four semesters. I teach at Golden Gate University where they have a 12 hour fin financial life planning certificate. So, uh, really happy about their accomplishment of putting that together. Um, there's some, some folks that I've like known for years <laughs> during the pandemic and I've never met. Uh, Dasha Glow was one of those people. Uh, Sarah Carr, uh, I got to meet her. And we had wonderful discussions about the Enneagram and the, the growing field. And I think it's going to be an exploding field of psychedelic assisted therapy.
Ashley Qualm had a great session on counter transference. And I'm going to have to get her slides because um, it was um, really interesting uh, how she expanded my mind of what countertransference was. And, and countertransference is when the financial therapist's uh, uh, stuff unfinished business gets in the way that the, the, the client will trigger something that um, is, is um, uh, no, in a way, this is a, I'm doing a terrible job of explaining this, kind of takes the financial therapists out because it hits their, their stuff. And she talked about um, counter-transference is a personal bias that gets triggered or when the uh, financial therapist goes into rescue mode, um, attraction to the client or repulsion uh, of the client is another form of countertransference. Of course, projection where you're putting someone else's face on the client. Um, counter resistance, um, being emotionally exhausted and over identification being over invested in our clients. I can relate to that because I remember there was a client that I finally came to uh, realize I cared more about her running out of money than she did. And this was a pretty serious running out of money. It's like she was going to be homeless in 18 months. And uh, I was really over identifying with her. Um, Gail Coleman did a keynote on somatic finance. She is the creator of the idea of somatic finance. Finance and somatic means body. And she did a wonderful presentation uh, to everyone that was quite talked about. Um, Christina Lynn, a former employee of mine who's gone on to get her doctorate and now is a new mother. We had a wonderful conversation. And then I ran into Prince Sarpong. I hope I get that right. I'm, I'm going up the steps into the uh, conference and this gentleman stops me and he says, are you Rick Kaler? And I said, I am. And he introduced himself. He says, I'm Prince. And I said, Prince, where are you from? He said, South Africa. Well, I was in South Africa in January of 2020. And so we got talking about South Africa and um, he was there and gave a presentation that unfortunately I uh, could not attend uh, on financial therapy and, and South Africa. And I asked Prince, I said, you know, I just did a podcast with somebody from Ghana. He says, oh, Peter? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, Peter. <laughs> and uh, uh, so that, uh, that podcast uh, is uh, to be, be released soon. Um, so that was, uh, that was funny because I had talked to uh, uh, one of my friends in India um, Partha and told him that I had talked with Peter who is very, very involved with financial literacy in uh, Ghana and he says, oh, I know Peter. <laughs> so it, it can be a small world. So those were uh, just some of the things, I mean, I talked with uh, so many other people and um, that I just don't have 
time to go into, but those were some of the, the takeaways for me personally. And uh, then I, I received quite an honor at the um, conference. It's, it's a little bit surreal as they're talking, they start talking about the person when they're giving out an award and usually halfway through the talking about what they've done and et cetera, you can figure out who it was. And as they started introducing the uh, practitioner, uh, outstanding practitioner award, it was probably about three sentences in, maybe less, that I realized that it's me. And um, I feel emotion now, pretty over overwhelming. Um, because it, it's a recognition by your peers. And being uh, recognized in that manner was um, so, hmm, talk about touching my heart. It touched my heart. And um, so for me, it was just um, sitting and receiving it and um, just all the warmth from everyone in the room was just so touching. Um, and I think I, I can relate. I have a, a real soft spot and I don't know, I don't know exactly what it's about. It's not, yeah, it's not something I've done a lot of work on. When someone is honored for just doing their best. Um, Bruce Ross was honored this year and they, they uh, use the words of tireless hours that he's worked on the FTA or for the FTA. And I have been on countless Zoom calls with Bruce and attested to the countless hours that he has worked. And it is, it is just, there's just something special when a person is recognized for the unseen, especially the unseen um, persistence, the unseen, um, um, I'm not coming up with good words, but efforts that are put out. And, you know, so for so many of these things, you don't, you don't get an award. Oftentimes, because nobody sees you. I think of financial therapists in general who they're, they're delivering, they're giving all of their wisdom on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And uh, nobody, nobody else ever sees that except for the client. And to some degree, they're unsung heroes in what they do. And so to be recognized for my efforts, which are not exactly unseen because I'm so, you know, what I've done is, is, has been fairly public in nature. It's um, was just it was just touching. Um, it was just touching. And then to um, top it off, John Grable, another uh, University of Georgia uh, professor, who was part of the four um, that called the group of thirty together in two thousand and. Eight. I think Christy Archuleta was part of that group. Oof. 
um, Megan Ford may have been. I'm not sure. But, um, and of, well, John was uh, inducted into the financial planning or the financial therapy hall of fame, which was such an honor. Um, they let him know. <laughs> so he was prepared and he went through it. He's a delightful speaker. John is just a delightful speaker. And he went through a history of the FTA and he went back and had the names of the 30 people who were at that first meeting. And as I looked at that list of the 30, only six are still active in the uh, FTA. And as John said, many never came back again. Many said it's not going to work. Um, but there were, uh, there were six people that are still active in this uh, organization. So it was wonderful seeing him um, be honored in that way. I mean, he has his thumb on so much research and really helped guide the organization in those early years. And I'd be remiss not to mention, uh, you know, um, University of Georgia was kind of prevalent at Kansas State University. I think all of them, all of them started at Kansas State University. It's kind of like the, the spawning grounds of, of uh, the financial therapy who's who. And uh, Megan McCoy was there. Um, and she, uh, she is head of the program, as I understand it, the financial uh, therapy program and uh, the financial planning program at Kansas State is a prolific writer. Um, I'm not sure who's touched more research, but I have a hunch that uh, Megan may have her name on more stuff than, than anyone. And there was a, uh, a paper to be presented and they said that the author didn't, wasn't there so Megan stepped in, I, wa I, I walked in and Megan's going through this presentation like it was hers. I'm like, wow, <laughs> she has skills beyond even what I understood. And then I finally found out they only list the presenter of uh, an academic paper as the lead author. And um, Megan had uh, edited it and was one of the authors. And, knew it inside out and she did a great job with it so well that's kind of a summary of my uh, experience this year at the FTA I hope to see all of you in San Diego at the uh, 2024 in uh, May again May 16th to the 18th it is a really wonderful conference. And also don't forget about the Nazruden Project, September 5th through the 7th in the Black Hills of South Dakota, which you would fly into Rapid City, South Dakota. And I'll probably have more to say about that as we get closer. So thanks for joining me, letting me ramble. Uh, and give you a little update of the FTA conference. Take care and look forward to talking with you next week. Thanks for joining me, Rick Kaler, for another episode of Financial Therapy. It's not just about the money. This is where I combine the nuts and bolts of financial advice with the emotions that drive making them. Remember, every financial behavior whether it appears illogical to you or others, makes perfect sense when we understand the underlying beliefs, feelings, and thoughts. Sign up for my weekly blog at financialawakenings.com. I hope you'll join me again for our next episode.